Level 5.3 is all about exponential functions. So first we start off with the definition of an exponential function. What we mean by that is the functions of the form a to the x, where a is a real number. So any number to a variable power will give us an exponential function. So just to get comfortable with these, I know we've done these a bunch of times before, but uh, let's evaluate these. So that means plug it. Uh, 2 to the 0 is 1. 2 to the 3rd is 8. We should know these. 2 to the negative 2nd is the same as 1 over 2 squared, or 1 fourth. 2 to the 3 halves is 2 cubed, then the square root. So this is the square root of 2 cubed, or the square root of 8, which we know how to simplify as 2 square root 2. And last up, 2 to the negative 1st, which is the same as 1 over 2 which is 1 half. Just as a reminder, I, I put these down here for a reason. Um, laws of exponents that you learned as a freshman in high school, uh, or even in eighth grade before that. Uh, so we have, uh, when you multiply like bases, you add the exponents. When you take an expo exponent to a power, you multiply. When you have two things to a power, we distribute that power. Uh, one to any power is one. Uh, a number to a negative exponent is the same thing as 1 over that number to that power. And any number to the zeroth power is 1. So we are now ready to see uh, and work with exponential functions. So the next thing we usually do is, how do you tell from a table if something is an exponential function or not? Versus how do you tell if it's a linear function? Versus how do you tell if it's a quadratic function? So if something is exponential, then we multiply by same number each time. So if we go from one, one fourth to one half, this is times two. One half to one is times two. One to two is times two. Two to four is times two. Four to eight is times two. So when we are doubling or tripling, or quadrupling every single time, then that is an exponential function. Versus if we are adding, so I'm going to do this in red, adding equals linear, multiplying equals exponential. If we are adding by the same number each time, so this is plus 3, plus 3, plus 3, plus 3, plus 3. We see that this is linear. If we notice that it's not linear or exponential, it could be uh, quadratic, but all we right now is we're going to see exponential or linear. All right, flip it over. So after we look at stuff on the table, now we talk about what does the graph look like. So I'm going to draw ourselves a graph, and we're going to do this first one using a table as well. So the standard numbers that we use when we make a basic table is negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So 2 to the negative second is 1 fourth. 2 to the negative first is 1 half. 2 to the zeroth is 1. 2 to the first is 2. 2 to the second is 4. So our graph, uh, 2 to the zeroth is 1. 2 to the 1 is 2. 2 to the second is 4. 2 to the negative first is 1 half. 2 to the negative second is negative 1 fourth. Our graph here looks something like this. And if you notice, just like we did with rational functions, there is no number that you can plug in that will get you 0 out. So we have an, a horizontal asymptote at 0. Likewise, if we did y equals 3x, our graph would be, we'll use the exact same numbers, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, because we're going to go 9 spaces. So 3 to the negative second is negative 1 ninth, so that's pretty small. And then 3 to the negative first is 1 third, so that's a little bit bigger. 3 to the zeroth is 1. 3 to the first is 1, 2, 3. And 3 to the second is 9. So again, our graphs look something like this, where they are exponentially growing to the right. 
So then what happens if we change it up just a little bit? Well, I want to be able to write these exponential functions as something that we know. So 1 over 2 to 1 half to the x is the same thing as writing 2 to the negative x. Now if we see 2 to the negative x, that is a reflection over the y-axis. And I'm going to do, again, the table here and then graph these. So negative second, negative first, 0, 1, 2. If I plug in negative 2 here, I get 4 out because negative 2 to the negative negative second is 2 to the second. 2 to the negative first, or 1 half to the first is 2, 1, this is going to be 1 half, 2 to the second would be 1 fourth. So with our graph here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 1, 2. Sorry, this should be 1, this should be 1 half, this should be 1 fourth, this should be 2, this should be 4. So what happened here, if those are about right, is my graph flipped. So this is a flip over y axis. Same thing with y equals 1 third x. So if I draw this graph in here, it's going to be flip the flip version of b. So 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 3 to the 0 is 1. 3 to the 1 third to the negative first would be 3. 1 third to the negative second would be 9. 1 third, 1 ninth. And what's happening here is again, this is just the same thing as 3 to the negative x power. So what happens between these is we just flipped over the y-axis. So after we talk about basic graphs, we can talk about transformations. We've done these. So this gives us flip over the y-axis, and this would be down 3. So we're moving this graph, basically, down 3 spots. So instead of being at 0, 1, I'd be at 0, negative 2. Instead of being at negative 1, 2, I'm going to be at negative 1, negative 1, because 2 minus 3 is negative 1. If I plug, if I'm at negative 2, I would be at 1. Everything's just getting moved down three spots. Again, here, if I plug in 1, I'd get negative 2 and a half. If I plugged in 2, I get negative 2 and 3 quarters. This would be my new horizontal asymptote at 3, because I'll never be 3, negative 3, excuse me. And that's just our basic transformation. Likewise, this negative in front is a flip over x-axis. So we have a flip over the x-axis. So this is 2 to the x flipped over and moved up 1. So up 1 means that's going to be my horizontal asymptote. If I plug in 0, I get negative 1 plus 1, which is 0. If I plug in negative 1, I get positive a half. If I get plug in negative 2, I get positive 3 quarters. If I plug in 1, I get negative 1. If I plug in 2, I get negative 3. And my graph, what happened here was a flip and this moved it up 1. So this is flipped up 1. If I know that my basic function has a horizontal asymptote at 0, then the transformation is just going to shift my horizontal asymptote up or down. And then I just need to know how to flip them. So that's our graphing. Let's move it on to the next page. So one of the next great things with exponential functions is this number that has arised 
in many different ways, um, founded in, or discovered really, in the 1600s by a mathematician named Euler. And we call this number E based off of the mathematician. So this is Euler's number. Euler is spelled E-U-L-E-R, and it's pronounced Euler. So Euler. We def he defined this number as 1 plus 1 over n to the nth power. And this is a summation. So if you look at all of these numbers as n gets larger and larger and larger, what you get, and this I'm going to, we write it as an expression in calculus, is E, Euler's number, is the limit as n goes bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger of all of this. And what his number really is, is 2.7182, da, 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 da. This, again, is a number, just like pi, just like the square root of 2, is irrational. It never repeats itself, which is a really important number because it's one of these fundamental properties that we have in mathematics that pops up in all different types of spots. So know that E is a nice number, and we're going to be doing some work with it. So just like with any real number, this irrational number, which is a real, e to the x still looks like our table we can do, x, y, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. So this would be e to the negative second, e to the negative first, 1, because any number to the 0th power is 1. Then we have e, then we have e squared. So just like we had before, our graph looks something. E is 2.71, so it's just between 2 and 3, and then like this. So our graph, if we're sketching, looks something like this. So let's look at a couple other of these graphs. Just as an expansion of what we talked about earlier today. So if I have this e to the x minus 3, that's shifting my graph 3 to the right. So if I plug in 3, sorry, x, y. So if I plug in 3, I get 1 out. Because 3 minus 3 is 0. So then I have e to the 0 is 1, and that makes it negative. So that's negative 1. That negative 1 out front flips it. So instead, of, I'm going to be here. So that's negative 1. So there's my graph. There's my first point. If I plug in 2, that's 2 minus 3. So that's negative e to the negative first power. So that's 1 over negative e. So that is a fraction. So that at 2, it's getting smaller. If I plug in 4, I get negative e out, so that's 1, 2, 3, so that's between negative 2 and negative 3, so look what I have here. I have my graph flipped. This x minus 3 here, let's zoom in just a little bit, that's my shift right, and this negative in front gives me my flip over x axis. So let's continue looking on at some of these other graphs. If I have y equals x plus 2, if I look at this x plus 2 here, that's a shift left 2. So how do I shift my graph left 2? So at negative 2, I'm going to get 1. At negative 3, I'm going to get 1 over e. And at negative 1, I'm going to get e. So let's label these. This is negative 1, e. This is negative 2, 1. And this third point is negative 3, 1 over e. Once I get my points, we're growing exponentially. So again, the domain, all reals. 
the range y is greater than 0. If I look at my last graph, e to the x plus 2, I have that number on the outside. This is a shift up 2. So instead of my y-intercept being at 1, it's going to be at 3. If I plug in 0, I get 3. I'm going to have my horizontal asymptote at 2. At 1, I get 1 over e. At, sorry, at negative 1, I get 1 over e. At 1, I get e plus 2. So that's almost 5. So right here at 1, it's e plus 2. So there's my graph. If we know how to shift things up, down, left, and right, and flip them, we can graph any one of these shapes. Last thing with exponential functions, we go to solving. So the easiest way to solve an exponential function is if you have equal bases, then the exponents have to be equal. So same base, then solve. So we have to know some things about exponential powers. So 81, we can write that as a power of 3. That would be 3 to the x plus 1. That stays the same. It would be the same as 3 to the 4th. Now if we have 3 to the 4th equals 3 to the x plus 1, then that's just the same thing as saying x plus 1 equals 4 or x equals 3. That's how we're going to solve these exponents. So we have like bases here, e to the negative x squared equals, well here we have e to the x squared, so that's e to the 2x, and then times e to the negative third. Well, when we multiply like bases, we add the exponents, it's e to the negative x squared equals e to the 2x minus 3. Now we have like bases, so we just set the exponents equal to each other, which then we get x squared plus 2x minus 3. So then we have to factor, and we have x and x, and then numbers that multiply to negative 3 that add to positive 2. So that means x equals negative 3 or x equals 1. So this, again, is just getting to our algebra that we know and love. Same thing. Equal bases, set the exponents equal to each other. Add x, so we get 4x equals 2. x equals 1 half, that's c. And last bit, which is a little tricky, uh, these aren't like bases yet, so we're going to have to make 4 the same as 2, and we want to get them all the smallest base that they're related to. So this would be 2 to the 2x times 2 to the x squared equals 16 squared, which is 2 to the 4th times 2. Now we have like bases, and I'm just going to clean this up. This is 2 to the x squared plus 2x equals 2 to the 8th. Now we set the exponents equal because we have two bases that are equal. So we get x squared plus 2x equals 8, or x squared plus 2x minus 8 equals 0. Then we can factor, so this is x plus 4, x minus 2 equals 0. And then the last bit, x equals negative 4, or x equals 2. So that is solving exponential equations.